in terms of communities of interest or, or different interest groups or sectors and asking how do we identify participants on that committee? How do we work with your communities or your interest groups to bring people into this process in a way that's transparent and, and in a way that's, that's inclusive? <coughs> Once the committee is formed, that two-year timeline that Bruce referred to starts ticking. So the intention is that June 2010 is, is when, um, when we start the clock. Now, the other thing that's listed here is just that idea of building those linkages to the things that are already happening, whether it be Guayanas or, or the Scott Islands work or, or something uh, additional. So there's kind of the, the summary of how to get your feedback to us uh, past this meeting. Um, there, are, there are feedback forms, which you're welcome to fill out, and we'll collect those at the end of the night. But if you have further thoughts, you can submit them to the email address there or, or to the address, or um, you can call me up and we can chat. So I think that's all. Um, I'll hand it back over to Alex here. Thank you, Neil. Um, so what we're going to do now is take uh, 45 minutes. <clears throat> Members of the planning office and steering committee are going to come and sit with you. At, I think we can do it with four tables um, to go through these questions and any other questions that you have related questions, um, because that way we'll have you'll find that you'll get a lot of the, the detailed type questions answered that you have on your mind, and then we'll report that out to the whole group. But if there's any kind of sort of general question right now about what Neil's just presented, if there was something that was unclear about it. Uh, we can we can deal with that right now. Go ahead. How do you plan to engage the First Nations on the coast? Right. Good question. That wasn't important at all. <laughs> so going back to this idea of a, I mentioned the bilateral coordination steering committee and a planning office. So these are two bodies where uh, federal government agencies and First Nations are working collaboratively to advance this initiative. And so this all goes back to something that Scott referenced in his early remarks. In 2008, there was a memorandum of understanding signed between DFO, Coastal First Nations, who work on behalf of a number of Central Coast First Nations, and the North Coast Skeena First Nations Stewardship Society, who works on behalf of a number of North Coast First Nations. The Haida are sort of incorporated in this case within the Coastal First Nations umbrella, if you like. So that Memorandum of Understanding outlined um, how First Nations and uh, DFO would work within the context of a collaborative governance agreement to advance this initiative. It also set out the, 